So looking forward for you yourself then, uh, you've, well, you do all sorts. You've recently done your, your Wafer A licence, uh, you got your BBC radio uh, commentary, you do your writing. What's sort of next? To be honest, I mean, the, the de my day in, day out varies. But the main thing I do is, um, that I'm focusing on is giving back some of what I've gained um, experience-wise within the game and helping players um, with the football agency. So I think it's important, the knowledge that I have to impart that upon young people. Um, I've, you know, I did the last few contracts in my own career, probably from I was sort of 29. So I have experience in that. And representing young players and, you know, being in their corner when they need somebody in their corner is the next step for me. Um, that, that said, I never put myself in one box and just say that's what I am. I have. Um, I like to diversify. I like to. I really enjoy the media side of things, um, you know, which which is which is great because I'm talking about football and it's, you know it's my passion. So that side of things. And then there's there's other things as well. There's certain mentoring programs and um, helping young young people, which you know on the, on their journey as well. Which in the day in the society as it is today is increasingly more difficult. And is that something that you find important to you to stay in football? Because obviously it's something that we all love, and I suppose you particularly. It's my passion. You know, it's, I, f I follow my passion. I just probably decided when I was about 27, 28, um, that I'm not gonna, I don't want to do anything if I'm not passionate about it. Um, what's, for me, what's the point in getting out of bed every morning and doing something you really dislike? And, you know, we all have that choice. We all do have the choice, regardless of whether some people think they um, they don't. We, you know, we all have the choice to go and do something. It may not be exactly how you want it, but we have the choice to go and follow, you know, what we're putting this earth to do, and it's follow your dreams. And it's something that comes up quite a bit. Um, just want to touch on it a little bit. People say the amount of professional footballers you get, a lot of people who've got the dreams and aspirations, um, but when they come out of it, there's not much for them. Mm -hmm. Have you done much forward planning? Um, or was it a couple of years ago you started to look at your other options and start to develop? I think I, think I realised before I even went to Accrington, I knew, I knew my best years were behind me. I mean, at the second time I went, I was without a club and I was injured and I, I went back into Man United and then second time that I'd been back training as a, um, since I'd been a professional footballer, I started to think, you know, what, what next? Um, if I didn't get a club, um, if, you know, if I did, I'm, I'm, yet, I'm potentially one to five years away from my transition out of football and it's proved, proven to be right. And I think that's why Salford's been such a great, a great um, fit, really. I think I've come here, I've been able to wean myself off playing day in, day out, you know. So it's taken the day-to-day -day, um, football pressure and the football commitment out of it and I've been able to slowly transition into other areas of other areas of football and other areas of my life so I think that for me is, is work for me I think you know I've gone away and done my UEFA B and my UEFA A license I've upskilled myself in different areas I'm learning Spanish um, or picking up on my Spanish that I used to do so there's, there's more there's more and more that I can do and I realize it's a big world out there and there's a lot of aspects within football and out of football that I can I can, um, you know, I can lay my hand to. Yeah, I suppose you're effectively the last of the originals um, from that first Ulfa game, the friendly. Uh, now Lynch has gone and um, you finished. Um, but a lot's changed in that time. How, as a player, have you found the changes and how have you coped? I've coped quite well, I think. Um, I'm used to, you know, football changes so quickly and at every level, you know, one minute you're flavour of the month, the next minute you're not. Whether you're a player or, you know, whether you're in, in playing capacity, you just have to get on with it. As long as you remember that focusing on the football on the pitch is the, is the main part, the rest of it kind of um, doesn't affect you as much. So there's been a lot of change. You know, the thing, as you say, there's only Jay Lynch still left here from the, from the first couple of games that I, you know, from when I first came in. So um, I've seen people come and go. And you know, it's part and parcel of the business, really. And one of the important ones, obviously, Byrne and Jono coming in. Yeah. Are they anything like you've experienced before or seen before? Um, no, because I've never, I've never had two managers before, you know, at the same time. Um, but they, you know, what, they, what they bring is 
a relentless passion. They, re they bring passion. You see it out there on a Saturday, you see it at training, and that they, they demand from people, they demand standards. And you know, one of the things when I first came in is, you know, they sort of said, look, we can't teach you how to play football, but as long as you're maintaining your standards, then we'll all, we'll all be okay. And you know, they've made sure that I maintain my standard. When, when they feel like I've been dropping off, they've let me know. And you know, I've done my best to be as professional as I can and help the dressing room and help Bernard and Jono, you know, as one of the senior players. And how, they're still only young, um, how far do you think they could go, the next Clough and Taylor? Maybe, something yeah. like that? You know what, they, as I say, there's, there's, no, there's no limit to what people can do. It's, you know, you, you limit yourself. So as long as people are upskilling themselves and making sure that they're getting the tools, you know, because obviously as they go higher, the more difficult it's going to get. You know, as long as you get, you've got the tools to do that, then there's nothing to stop people, people rising up the ladder. I mean, that's it's purely down to how you invest in yourself. You were just saying about how you were using your experience stuff to help them. What sort of character are the other lads losing in the dressing room to think? Were you like the father figure almost that they'd look up to and speak to? To be honest, I, I don't know. Um, you'd have to probably ask the other lads that. Um, I just played my part and where I saw a gap that needed filling, I tried to fill, fill that gap um, and make sure that we all stayed together. You know, because probably one of the most famous non-league clubs, you know, in the UK now. And a lot of things get thrown at players, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be, you know, out on the street. And it's easy to get distracted, you know. So, you know, with the, you know, even things like the documentary and so on, it creates a distraction. The FA Cup run did the same. So it's important that, you know, we don't forget what the main core of what we're trying to do here. And what we're trying to do is win football matches. And that's probably one thing that I've always tried to focus in on and get rid of the noise so that everybody can focus in and um, focus in on what the job at hand was and which was gaining promotion. Who was that to you in your career? Who was your or who were your influences? Um, um, I, I had numerous. You know, I had numerous. I had, um, I think back to, back at Man United, you know, I only had to look in the dressing room, you know, the likes of the class of 92, who led by example, you know, sometimes it's not the words, it's not the words that somebody, people come and say to you, they lead by example and they show you a standard, they show you a work ethic, they show you what it requires to be at the very, very top. Mm. And, you know, they, people like the class of 92, I look at, um, well, that that year, that era really, you know, you got your Roy Keynes, he was relentless with his work ethic and his standards as well. Um, you know, personally, people like Quinton Fortune helped me with the transition of being a reserve team player into a first team player and, and having me having a career. He, you know, he, we had more of a personal relationship and he helped me in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, th there's lots, there's lots. I go back to, I go to Watford. Watford, there was people like Sean Dyche. Obviously, Burnley manager now, a leader in the dressing room, and there was other older players there as well. Michael Hayes, Marcus Gale, people who you know gave me, helped me turn into a man from probably from being a boy, you know. So, you know, other clubs as well. There were numerous players, but you know, they're the people that spring to mind. Can you pick? I mean, you only have to look around the walls here, but can you pick a favourite uh, Salford goal moments? Like what bits have you particularly enjoyed about the club? I've enjoyed the feeling of joy when, you, when we've gained promotion twice. Two totally different experiences, um, but it's the, it's the moment where you know all the hard work you've put in. You know, you've actually mathematically, um, or you know, mathematically got what you need to get points wise, and then you've gained the promotion. Because ultimately, you know, no matter what way you look at it, if you don't gain promotion, it's a failed season. Mm -hmm. So. Those moments, you know, there's individual moments that I've really enjoyed. Um, you know, I enjoyed Gareth Seddon's goal against Ashton. You know, I was, I'd just come off and I was on the bench and I could barely run, but I managed to muster up, you know, 30 yards to go and catch him and enjoy the celebration with him because it's individual moments like that where you just need, you know, everybody's looking for somebody who, who gives you the lift. And he gave us the goal, which, you know, we've got us through. And Seddon would be the first to say that he hadn't played much towards the back end of the season, or you know, in the season as a whole, to be honest, but important moments like that where everybody feels it, you know, the, the way we won, the way we won on the final day um, at Workington, it was fantastic, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. 
the FA Cup was special, really, really special. It, the first time Moor Lane was, you know, filled to the rafters, and it was just a special night. There was something about that night. From the moment we walked off the coach and walked in here, we knew we were going to beat Notts County. Um, obviously, we had to go out there and show it and do it, but there was a belief. There was a belief about the whole place. The atmosphere was buzzing, and they're the sort. There's, you know, there's special moments like that that um, you know that will stay with me forever. I think you must have enjoyed that because it was. I think it's the only time you've ever celebrated like that or something like you were here. <laughs> Usually, it's just nice, calm, collected. Yeah, it, again, it, you, get, you get caught up in the emotion. You get caught up with the whole, um, yeah, with the, with the feeling of it all. That's, that, is, that, to me, is the romance of football. That is what I love about football. Um, it's the same way I was in a school yesterday and the kids were celebrating when I played football with them on the playground and they scored and they all ran away doing a celebration because it means something, you know, whether you're a kid or whether you're 35, 40 years old. And that's what football, that's what football does to people. So um, yeah, no, I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. It was a two yard, two yard screamer, but it was um, <laughs> scuffed it really. Um, but yeah, it went, it went in and um, it got us on the road to, um, you know, to the next round. Would you say that a um, couple of years here have been some of the, well, the best couple of seasons or among the best couple of seasons of your career? I'd say it depends on, on what on, you know, what you, how you quantify that, but. I've enjoyed myself here for the past two years as much as, I, as, I, as I've enjoyed any years in my football career. Um, you know, I, I was here to enjoy myself. Um, I didn't have any pressure. Yes, we had to win games, but I didn't feel any pressure. I just wanted to go out and enjoy myself. So from an enjoyment point of view, it's been, it's been brilliant. We've gained two promotions and you know, I'm proud of what we've achieved as a whole. Um, you know, some of the other points in my career Obviously, playing for different reasons. You, you know, at the beginning of your career, you're trying to forge, forge out a path. You know, then you're trying to maintain it through the middle. And this, this being the back end of my career, um, it's been, a, it's been a great way to, to exit playing, playing professional and semi now semi professional football. Are we going to see you come back down to Moor Lane? This isn't going to be your last time. No, no, I'll, I'll come down to Moor Lane. It's, it's part of, you know, it's part of what I am now. You know, I love, I love being at Salford. Um, I really enjoyed the last couple of years. Um, I'm, I'm part of the movement, you know, I enjoy being a part of the movement, the Salford City movement that's going forward and, um, you know, even if I'm coming down here and I'll have a pie and a pint with everybody and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get in the mix because I enjoy the atmosphere. Club legend. <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, yeah, just, you know, I've, pl I've played my part and I've enjoyed it and it's, it's been good. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure Thank the you. last couple of years. Cheers. Cheers and well, good luck with everything. Thank you.